Hi, so I just thought I'd share a, a video on how I actually kind of fix new rims onto my Brompton wheels. Um, the reason I'm doing this, I find that the, the wheels last about 10,000 kilometres and what you find is, you know, the, the rim is a wearing part, you've got the, the brake pad that's, that's constantly in contact with it, um, but at some point it will actually wear out. I don't know if you can see, let's have a look. So if you see where where that is, you know, the rim should be flat there and there's they kind of become indented and then at some point that will actually split. Um, when I've ridden them and they've actually split, I've been able to carry on riding them. I guess there is a chance that, that the, you know, the inner tube will burst or it will cause damage to the tyre so I think you know as soon as you you see indication of that you know that's when I actually change the rim okay so what I'm going to do first of all is take a few photos because that's always handy so just of how the the spokes are arranged at the moment and I find that really helps when you're actually putting the wheel back together so I'm going to take some photos of that and then basically take the tyre and the inner tube off and actually undo all of these spokes just so we can get the hub which we're going to put into the new rim which I've got here uh, there's different different rims you can get this is a standard uh, newer type rim it's got the blue circle um, and the blue circle indicates that it's the, for the for the rear wheel um, and you can get packs of spokes again it depends on the type of hub you've got and the the rim for the bike and whether it's a front wheel or the rear wheel so there's a whole different range of lengths and, and types of spokes some are kind of uh, double butted or you know the, the the width of the spoke actually varies across its length uh, but yeah just getting the right pack just makes it very easy um, when before we put the inner tube on we'll we'll actually kind of put this rim tape around so we've got some of that and in terms of tools, all I've got is just the um, the levers to take the tyre off, a screwdriver which will help when we put the spokes on and a spoke key as well. So you'll be pleased to know I've sped up some parts of this video, so I think that the total process was about two hours. Just taking the tyre off, the inner tube off, and the rim tape. When you're loosening or tightening spokes, an easy way to remember which way to turn the key is when you're kind of looking down at the wheel, so towards a hub from the outside of the wheel. Um, then it operates as you'd expect, you know, like a normal screw to turn. So you turn it anti-clockwise to actually loosen the spoke. So I just go around at this stage and rather than loosening them completely, um, just un untie them a little bit just so that we'll then be able to use a screwdriver for the rest of the job. The nipples have a kind of a screwdriver slot in the end which you can access through the, the holes you can see there in the rim. So I know that I've actually used an electric screwdriver here just to, to make the process go more quickly. Um, so again, we just go around and completely loosen off the, the nipples from the spokes here.
There we go, and you notice I can uh, remove half of the spokes at this stage, but, but half of them I'll need to remove that bit of black plastic and the, and the cogs from the hub to be able to actually get those get those out. The old rim can be recycled. I, I tend to keep the spokes, um, you know, just as spares. So. What invariably happens is I have lots, end up with lots of bags of old spokes, um, which never actually get used. There we go. So I just take the cogs off. There's a, a circlip, and you just need to get a small flathead screwdriver and just prise off uh, the circlip, which is just a, a kind of a a hoop of metal just with a, a a gap in it at one one point there you go that's what it's supposed to look like and then that can just be taken off and cleaned And then we can clear up all of the the old spokes and uh, all the and give the give the hub a, a clean as well, just so everything's uh, nice to work with. There we go. Looks like new. But uh, what I discovered when when cleaning it was this uh, crack that's actually developed. Um, so not best pleased about that. Um, but I'm just going to continue using it and uh, see what happens. I'll take my chances. Um, I went to a wheel building class, and what they recommended was actually uh, kind of using this kind of uh, thick oil uh, at the end of the spokes. So an easy way to apply them is just get an old pot. This is a hummus pot. Other pots are available, um, and just kind of yeah, as you can see there, twirl the, the spokes in job done. On the rim you can see interestingly the the holes aren't all in the center line of the rim there. The the you know you have the drive side spokes going to the right hand holes and left hand spokes to the left of the rim. So what we're doing is just lace threading through the spokes. Every other hole we we pop through a spoke on the drive side. a bit like a mechanical octopus. Oh, it did. It doesn't anymore. Okay, and uh, so what I do here is locate the valve hole and put in a spoke to the hole to the left of the valve hole. That's the first one. And then work your way around the spokes. The next spoke needs to go in the, the fourth hole along. And similarly every fourth hole you want to to kind of put a spoke in i'm just tightening the the nipple on enough just so that it doesn't uh you know just so it holds it in place it's not tight by any means at this point okay and you see i've, I've rotated it to the left which you need to do now if on the drive side I've th threaded through spokes from the other side and then connected them to the every second hole so in between the first set of spokes now we move on to the non-drive side and again I'm locating the um, the valve hole and you can see I'm trying to figure out which you know from the length of the spoke which is the correct hole uh, to go through for, for symmetry um, and you can see you want that kind of gap either side of the valve hole because that's where you're going to be placing the pump when you're pumping up the tyres. So 
so it's crucial you actually get that valve hole and the spokes around it correct otherwise you won't be able to pump up your tyre so it gets a little bit fiddly as, as more spokes go on and it's it's very easy to kind of scratch the new rim if you're not careful with the end of the spoke as, as you're kind of threading them um, and it's okay to to bend the spoke a little bit you know when you're putting it in into place And here again, yep, just kind of putting the nipple on and just kind of fixing it enough just so that it holds the, the spoke in place. Um, which you need to use a screwdriver at this stage because you, you kind of don't really have access to, uh, to twirl the nipple with your fingers. Uh, but I'm making a bit of a meal of it. There we go. So again, every second hole you just need to add in a spoke in a similar manner. And so this spoke will go into the rim four holes along from the first one. Careful not to scratch the rim. Counting. <laughs> And then with the last set, it's very easy to uh, to just pass the spoke through from the other side. And then all the spokes cross over the other spokes twice, or they cross over two other spokes before they go into rim. So it's pretty clear which holes that they go into. And there you go, the, the kind of the wheel is laced up, it just needs to be trued now, which uh, I'm not really going to go into in this video. Um, but I've actually got a truing, truing stand, but it can actually be done quite easily in the, the wheel of the bike as well, in the frame of the bike. Um, so first of all, I just kind of tighten all the spokes so they feel about the same tension, but they're not they're not properly tightened, they're just kind of, you know, they're, they're beginning to feel firm. So I'll just do that with a screwdriver because it's not, you know, using the screwdriver is quick, much quicker than using the, the spoke key, which is a bit fiddly. So I popped into the truing stand and that's that's what it looks like the first time it goes in. So you could see there was a, you can see it's wobbling around, you know, what we're aiming to do is tighten it. There we go, making a, a nice drink because this bit can take time. And what you're looking to do is actually get it so there's, I don't know, half a millimetre or less of, of play as you rotate the wheel. And it also needs to be kind of vertically aligned as well. But there we go. So there's the, the finished wheel in terms of uh, lacing and truing. So we need to put on the cogs again. So put on the, the bit of black plastic. These cogs can only go on one way. Um, which makes life easy. That's a kind of a spacer ring. A second cog. And here I'm inadvertently demonstrating that they can only be fitted on one way. There we go. And then the circlet needs to be fitted back on. Uh, and the way to do this is just hold hold one end down with your thumb. Again, using a small flathead screwdriver, just to to kind of uh, push out the spring of the circlip, hook it into place. When you hear that ping, that's that's the job done. We now need to add the rim tape back on. So these modern double walled rims use this yellow tape. The older rims use a, a blue tape. So there's just a couple of things to do when putting the tape on. One is to, to line up that the hole, obviously, with the valve hole. So make sure that's that's on to start off with. 
and then so I've missed a bit so I'm just kind of moving the tape over so it's lined up and then also the tape has to be kind of centered all the way around so it's, there we go job done And then we just need to put the inner tube and the tyre back on. Um, with these, these are Marathon Plus tyres, and they they're directional, so it does matter which which kind of way they go around. So there's a little indication that says rotation. So you just need to make sure that that will be going in the direction that the wheel is travelling. Um, so I put in the the valve first. Uh, these are Schwalb AV4 inner tubes which are good and I like them because they have this kind of locking ring which you know enables me to you know get that in there so it won't come out so that's fixed so one side of the tire goes on to help the lock ring a little bit more and then it's a pretty easy job to get the the rest of the tire back on the older rims made this job a lot harder but as you can see you don't you don't actually need any tools to get the tire on you just do it with your thumbs So and one last thing I'm doing here is just because I had kind of greasy hands and you know there was oil as well, so I'm just giving the the rims a, a clean with a bit of white spirit. The rest of the bike is filthy, but at least this <laughs> this one bit of the bike will look nice. And of course, yeah, you know, the, the real reason is you don't want grease or oil on the on the braking surface. Okay, so that's now ready to go back on the bike. And just so you can see, here's a close-up of the the old rim. So that's the you can see the kind of curve, and that's what the inside looks like. And you can actually see the metal was split, and that was what's causing causing it to bend. And there we go, a new wheel in action.